Check out my new macOS installation. This is macOS 14, Sonoma. Not the latest one, but still pretty recent. Aside from the UI element being incredibly small, it's actually very usable. I can open Chrome, head over to YouTube, and look, this is my channel, a premium typewriter. I've also got App Store here so that I can install apps like the Apple Configurator. All right, enough playing around. This is actually a virtual machine running macOS under VMware Workstation Pro on Windows 11. It's surprisingly handy. You might wonder, why do you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to test a new macOS feature or you've got a Mac Mini M4 that needs a DFU restore after an SSD upgrade. A virtual machine like this works perfectly for that in case if you do not have another physical Mac for the purpose. In this video, I'll walk you through how I managed to boot nearly any version of macOS on a non-macOS system, Windows 11 in this case. Here is what you need. First, you need a working macOS environment to prepare the bootable ISO. While it's theoretically possible to do this on Windows or Linux, it's much easier on macOS itself. It doesn't have to be the exact version you plan to run, just the reason why it will help. Next, you need a target machine a Windows laptop in this demonstration, and a way to transfer files. A USB drive is always the simplest option, but you can also use your network. Either way, you'll be moving around 20 gigabytes of data. Fair warning, the entire process took me about two hours. It's not something you get done in a snap. That said, the result is a fully functional macOS VM on Windows, running through VMware Workstation Pro, which as of 2025 is free for personal use. Uh, the process is straightforward but time consuming, but you don't need any shady software or tools and files are from reputable sources, either open source projects or official vendor websites, so there are no privacy or security concerns. Just keep in mind the download size and the time commitment. If you're okay with that, let's get started. Let's begin with what you need to do on a working macOS system first. The goal here is to prepare a bootable ISO file of the macOS image. First things first, you need to download the macOS installation files, preferably from Apple's official sources for authenticity. There is a handy tool to help with this, Git macOS. Head over to GitHub and search for Git macOS and the first result should be the one that you're looking for. Have a quick read through the project description if you like. If you have Git installed, it's easiest to copy the HTTPS URL and clone this project from your terminal. I use WAP, but the default terminal app works just fine. Run git clone and paste the git URL under your desired directory. This will download the repository to your local system. Alternatively, you can download the zip from GitHub, whatever works for you. Once you've got the files, navigate to the project folder and locate git macOS.command. Right click it, choose open with, and select Terminal. By default, it should be the top option. When the script launches, it will connect to Apple's server and list available macOS restore images. This might take a few minutes, but once the list appears, select the version you want. For this demo, I'm sticking with macOS 14, Sonoma. As of February 2025, the latest version is Sonoma 14.7.4, which happens to be option number two on the list. So I type two and hit enter. The script will download around 16 gigabytes of data directly from Apple. All you need to do at this stage is wait. Depending on your internet speed, it should take about 15 to 20 minutes. Once the download is complete, you will find a macOS downloads folder within the Git macOS directory. Inside, navigate to public release where you will see the downloaded macOS installer. Double click the install assistant.pkg file and follow the prompts. After installation, you should see an install macOS Sonoma app in your launchpad. Now comes the trickiest part, preparing the bootable ISO itself. It involves some terminal commands, but don't worry, I'll include them in the video description so you can copy and paste. Still, it's a good idea to understand what each command does. Step one, create a DMG file. Run the following command to create a temporary DMG file. This command creates an 18 gigabytes of disk image named macOS.dmg. Step two, mount the DMG. After running this command, if you open Finder, you will see a new mounted drive called macOS. Step three, create the bootable installer. We use the built-in macOS command line utility inside the installer app to create the bootable drive. The command syntax assumes the installer is in your applications folder. This step will take a while. You will see progress updates in the terminal. Step four, unmount the drive. 
Once the process completes, run this command to detach the volume as we do not need it anymore. Step 5. Convert the DMG. Now we need to convert the DMG to a CDR file, which is essentially an ISO image. Also using the HDI util command line tool. Lastly, rename the .cdr file to .iso. And that's it, your bootable ISO file will be available in your home directory as macOS.iso. The very final step is to transfer the ISO to your Windows machine. You can use a USB drive or transfer it over the network, whichever is more convenient. That wraps up everything you need to do on macOS. Next up, we'll move to Windows and get the virtual machine running. This is my Windows 11 installation. The first thing we need to do is download the virtual machine software. For this setup, we'll use VMware Workstation Pro for Windows, which as of now is free for personal use. To get started, head over to Google and search for VMware. The first result should be that blog post announcing that VMware Workstation Pro is now free for personal use. Scroll down and click the Download VMware Workstation Pro for Windows option. You'll be prompted to sign in on Broadcom's website. VMware was recently acquired by Broadcom, just in case you didn't get a memo. If you don't have an account, click the register option in the top right corner to create a free account. I already have an account, so I'll skip that part. After logging in, you should see a list of available VMware Workstation versions. We're looking for version 17 for Windows. At the time of this recording, um, the latest release is 17.6.2. Click download, agree to the terms, and you will get VMware Workstation full 17.6.2.exe file. Run the installer from your explorer. The installation process is straightforward and should only take a few minutes. Here's the catch though. By default, VMware Workstation doesn't support macOS as a guest operating system. When you create a new VM, you notice only four options there. Windows, Linux, VMware ESX, and other. No macOS. To fix this, we need a tool called Auto Unlocker. Head back to your browser and search for Auto Unlocker GitHub. I'll include the direct link in the video description as well. Once you found it on GitHub, go to the Release tab, download the latest version, currently is 2.0.1. Unzip the downloaded file. Inside, you'll find a single .exe file. Simply just run it. The tool is simple. Just click Patch and let it work its magic. No configurations needed. It automatically handles everything. Once it's done, close the window. Reopen VMware Workstation and you will see something new, Apple Mac OS as a guest OS option, noise. Let's continue setting up the VM. Go back to the last setting page and browse to select the macOS.iso file we prepared earlier on macOS. Click Next. When prompted for the guest OS, make sure to select Apple Mac OS and choose macOS 14 since we're installing Sonoma or otherwise. Then leave most settings as their defaults but you can tweak them based on your system's capabilities. For reference, here are the settings I used. For CPU, I gave one processor with eight cores. For memory, I gave eight gigabytes. Obviously, the more, the better, I adjust as needed. For hard disk, I gave 80 gigabytes. It'd be enough for Sonoma with ample extra headroom. For graphics, I enabled Accelerate 3D graphics. I also gave the recommended eight gigabytes of memory. I also specified a resolution of 2560 times 1600. You can adjust for your monitor setup. Once you've configured everything, save the settings and launch the VM. On startup, you should see the Apple logo with a progress bar. This initialization might take a few minutes. Be patient. You will then be taken to the macOS recovery options. First, select your language and click continue. It's important to know that before installing macOS, you need to format the virtual drive first. So we then open Disk Utility and select VMware Virtual SATA Hard Drive on the left. Click Erase and choose APFS as the format and name it macOS. Confirm that new APFS volume is around 85 gigabytes or per your previous configuration. Close the Disk Utility once you're done. Now, go back to the macOS recovery options and select Install macOS Sonoma. Follow the on-screen instructions and select macOS Drive as you format it. The installation will take around 30 to 40 minutes depending on your hardware, just let it run. After installation, the macOS out of the box experience wizard will launch. Go through the initial setup process and answer the usual prompts and customize your settings. Once complete, you'll land on the macOS desktop inside your VM. However, you'll probably notice that the display aspect ratio looks a bit off. The desktop might not be rendering correctly. At least that's what happened in my installation. 
Don't worry, this is a common issue because the VMware tools aren't installed yet on a guest OS. Let's fix that. First, on a macOS desktop, you see the install macOS Sonoma disk image still mounted. You need to eject it by right-clicking it and select eject. Then in VMware's top menu, go to VM, install VMware tools. You will encounter an error prompt instructing you to manually download the VMware tools ISO. Click the provided download link to get a file called darwin.iso. This file contains the tools we need. In VMware Workstation, go to VM Settings and navigate to CD slash DVD settings. Click Browse, select the darwin.iso file you just downloaded and make sure Connected is checked. Click OK and you will see VMware Tools disk image is automatically mounted on the macOS desktop. Now you can double click Install VMware Tools package to begin the installation process. Due to increased security meshes in recent macOS versions, the first installation attempt will likely fail. This is expected. macOS will prompt you to allow system extensions, so you need to click Open System Settings when prompted and navigate to Privacy and Security. Scroll down to find the section where macOS asks if you want to allow extensions from VMware INC. Click Allow. Now enter your macOS password when requested. Now you will have to restart your macOS VM to apply the changes. Before the reboot, the VMware tools installation wasn't successfully installed because the earlier security block. So you need to rerun the installer. This time, you won't receive any security warning or extension block prompts. So you can complete the installation and when prompted, reboot the VM again. After the second reboot, you should notice a significant improvement. This gives you an almost fully functional macOS environment running inside VMware on Windows 11. It's perfect for testing new macOS features or most importantly, performing tasks like the DFU restores. A quick final note on DFU restore if you are using the macOS VM on Windows 11. First, put your Mac Mini M4 into DFU mode as usual then connect it to your Windows machine, the one running Windows 11 with macOS VM in the foreground. Once the macOS VM detects the DFU device, you'll get a prompt asking where you want to connect it. Make sure you select the macOS VM because that's where you actually need it. Click OK and from there, the macOS VM will handle the DFU connection and communicate properly with your Mac Mini M4 in DFU mode. Now you've got two options for restoring your Mac Mini M4. The first is using Finder. However, since this is a fresh macOS setup, Finder will prompt you to download additional software to communicate with the Mac Mini M4 in DFU mode. The second option is using Apple Configurator 2, a free app from the Mac App Store. Once you open Apple Configurator 2, you will see your DFU device listed. Just right click it and select Restore. In both cases, it will download the macOS restore image directly from Apple's server. The key difference is that Apple Configurator 2 does not require any extra dependencies, making it a more straightforward choice. So pick whichever works best for you. That's a wrap for today's video. I hope this was helpful. If you find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. It would really help out. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Ciao.